Hey, what's up, Vox and Hops heads? I'm Matt, the vocals of Crypto C, and you're listening to my podcast, Vox and Hops, where I sit down with fellow metal musicians to talk about their lives, music, and craft beer. I hope that you've been having a great week. I've been having a great week. I'm always super excited on Wednesdays because that means that tomorrow is the Vox and Hops Thirsty Thursday virtual hang. I absolutely love these. It is always super fun. I have put the link to tomorrow's chat, which will be at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, in the description of this podcast. So go check it out. Come and hang out with some of the Vox and Hops alumni, other Vox and Hops heads. Some of my closest friends show up now and then, and I love when that happens. And uh, myself for a craft beer and a good chat and some laughs, because uh, that is something that we all need right now during these crazy times. On today's episode, I'm with Enrique Emilie List, the vocalist of Convent. Here it is, Vox and Hops, episode number 139. I warn you, what you are about to hear is very disturbing indeed. Hey, what's up, everyone? Today I'm with Enrique Emilie List from Convent. I am super stoked to be with you. Uh, you are someone that I've met through Instagram. You seem to be a Vox and Hops head, and then I saw that you were more than a Vox and Hops head. You are a super talented, amazing death metal screamer for a band that just released a, an album on Napalm Records, which is amazing. I thoroughly enjoyed the record. Uh, how are you, and how are you doing? Well, thank you. Um, so, everything considered, I'm doing great. <laughs> um, Band-wise, I think we've been so lucky uh, with this whole corona uh, virus thing. Uh, as you mentioned, we released our de debut album on the 24th of January, and we did our first uh, headlining tour in February around Northern Europe and, uh, and one gig in London. And the last show we played that was in oslo and i think the week after uh denmark went on lockdown wow yeah so we have just been so extremely lucky um because we don't have any uh, shows planned in the near future we do have some shows planned for the summer they are probably going to get cancelled but we're not in front of like a major tour um with a lot of big investments uh in it so so yeah everything considered we've been so lucky i have been speaking to a lot of people that uh, were either on tour or were just about to jump onto a tour and a lot of bands need to survive on their merchandise so you're lucky that, that you got out before that and you're lucky that uh, there's even discussions of from labels that are going to be pushing back releases so you got to tour the album you got to release the album and it's getting a lot of praise how do you feel about that yeah, we are, we're completely blown away by uh, all the positive feedback that we've received. Um, it just keeps coming in and yeah, it, we, we did not expect that. I mean, we're still a band that when we finish a song, we talk about, is this actually a song? <laughs> Can it be defined <laughs> as a song? Uh, yeah, so for all the in the positive reviews, we're, we're just we're so happy and and blown away by by it um yeah it's really incredible fox and hops is all about hanging out with metal people talking about their lives music and craft beer uh today i have a special beer i like this beer it is from my friends at overhop brewing company they were first located in brazil and they have relocated up here in canada and in toronto uh, much love to patty and tatiana for sending me some brews so that I can do some interviews from home. This is their black IPA. This is called Dark Hop. It clocks in at 7%. I'm stoked about it. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Tatiana. Everyone out there in Quebec, drink some Overhop brews. They're about to uh, open their new brewery, and I'm super stoked to start tasting those brews uh, that are coming out of there. What do you have on your side? You mentioned that you panicked a little at the craft beer <laughs> store or at the... Are there craft beer stores in Denmark, or is it, is it like uh, a liquor commission? There are, um, there are, but I think that they're all closed down now. Uh, some of them are doing, like, deliveries now, which is a really cool way of keeping you in business, I think. But I just went to, like, my regular uh, uh, grocery store, and I wanted to get some um, Mikela beer, because I was like, okay, it's it's Denmark, and I really like Mikela. I don't think I've ever had a bad beer from uh, from that brewery. Um, but they were so expensive. 
Um, so uh, instead, I bought everything else. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so what do you got? What do you got? We'll we'll, talk, we'll figure out what, what's the perfect beer for this moment. Yeah, absolutely. So I have uh, a New England IPA from Kissmeyer. And yes, that's a great brewery too. Yeah. yeah. And also from Kissmeyer, a fruit IPA. Mm. And also from Kissmeyer, a, se- a session IPA. And okay. then from another brew house called Hasliv Bruchhus. Uh, I have an organic double IPA because I don't think I've ever had a double IPA, uh, and it was on sale. So <laughs> okay, so let's let's do let the, I, I I have a warm spot for Kissmeyer. Mm? Uh, I have a friend that uh, brought me out some when I was in Denmark last time at Copenhagen. Yeah, I had such a good time that night. We went to uh, I talk about it all the time on the podcast. Anytime I hear about Copenhagen in Denmark, I talk about it on the podcast how I went to this tap room that was just so amazing. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's called B R A U S, whatever. Yeah, Bros. Yes, and it's right around the corner from that tiny venue that we played, and it was just so much fun. Yeah, I actually emailed you. Um, I think a, a long time ago. Uh, I think when you were going on tour with uh, with Origin. Uh, and I asked you if you wanted to interview uh, Jason and and John Longstress, and you did, and thank you, <laughs> and uh, yes. you recommended it in the email. Uh, so I went there and uh, had a lovely beer, but I haven't been back since because it's very expensive, <laughs> but also very good. So I'm saving up to go another time. It's all about uh, taking the right things. Okay, so op- open uh, which one? We had the fruited IPA or the other IPA? Was a New England? I would do the New England. It's it's a nice start. Yeah, I'll start with that one. I can't choose okay, so myself, so, so... Cheers. Cheers. Ooh, this is good. Malty, a little um, hot bite at the end. Really chocolatey. Uh, caramel. This dark hop black IPA is absolutely delicious. Cheers to Overhop. How is yours? It's really, really good. It's really, like, fresh and crisp, and um, I, um, I prefer, like, lighter beers, like Pilsners and IPAs and lagers. Um... Yeah, sorry to say, but not a big stout fan. You'll get there. Okay, fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 to each their own. Yeah. I, I but, just but love I, all I, beer. Yeah, I, I do want to move into, um, sort of try and move into darker territory. Uh, so I've been trying some like ruby ales and yeah, so slowly trying to get there. But um, yeah, I tried, uh, oh, what's it called? The Irish beer. Guinness. Guinness, absolutely. That was completely gone. Uh, I tried it like a few years ago and I really did not like that. <laughs> That's going to take a long time for me to uh, to be able to enjoy Guinness, I think. Guinness is different from the stouts that are coming out now, though. Guinness is so creamy and thick and heavy, but it's low in alcohol, which is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoy Guinness when I'm in Ireland and that's probably the only time that i ever order it okay <laughs> Fun, funny story we, we went the one time i had a, we wanted a proper pint when we played in dublin on the last tour and <laughs> we we ended up going to we asked the local staff at the venue where should we go for a proper proper pint they said go across the street right there across the the canal so we go there and we ended up in a it was a slovakian dude that owned the bar because there was causal all over the place the slovakian beer and here we are in Ireland in a Slovakian bar drinking a proper pint of Guinness. It was it didn't feel right. So <laughs> I'm going to have to try again next time. Yeah. Take me it. back to your first beer. Do you remember that? Uh, I do not. It was probably when I was very, very little and trying to taste my dad's beer or something. Um, but I do remember the first beer that I enjoyed um, because it took me a long time to, to, to like beer. I... Um, I was like a drinks gal when I was a teenager uh, for a long time. Um, and I think it was in, I was in high school and I was at a classmate's birthday party and it was in the summertime. It was really, really hot. And they had this uh, beer keg, like an all, I had drank all the things that I brought with me at that time, but I was, it was so hot and I was so thirsty. And so I just decided to like take a beer from the cold keg and it was, it was so delicious, like ice cold in a steaming hot room. It was, it was really, really good. And then I was like, there's something about this. Keg parties are fun parties. Yeah. 
I wish I'd gone to more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How were you in high school? What kind of a kid were you? Oh my were God. Were you exuberant? Were you out there? Were you more of an introvert? Um, I was, I just constantly felt so awkward. Um, but at the same time, I, I took drama classes because I wanted to go into acting. So it was kind of a, a mix between, I think, wanting to entertain, but then again, feeling very awkward, having a lot of body issues. I was, I was very confused, I think. I was like, oh, we have exams. <laughs> uh, yeah. In, in acting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, just in, in general, like all subjects. Um, I think like focusing was a bit hard, kind of still is. Um, so yeah, my grades weren't all that good, but I really enjoyed like the language classes. So I had English and, uh, French and Spanish. I uh, really enjoyed that. And I ended up working in languages. Um, so, but yeah, high school was, man, I wish I could go back and really tell myself that I shouldn't care so much about what other people think. You know, and stop, you know, stop being so, so insecure about my appearance because it doesn't matter and it's not that important. So yeah, I, yeah, high school was, yeah, it, it was stressful. <laughs> I have had the same experience that uh, I wanted to be very popular, but it was difficult yeah because i wasn't very cool <laughs> <laughs> i can't believe that i was just so self-conscious it was it yeah. was it's brutal it's brutal. Mm. even like it's been 20 years since i graduated from high school and just recently a friend of mine put together like a a facebook group and i'm seeing all these old pictures come out and seeing everything and i was like and it still triggers some strange anxiety it's really yeah, it's nice and to have everyone. A huge shout out to to everyone that set this up, uh, and being nice and asking my permission before posting certain pictures. <laughs> and and apparently, I'm the only one that has said no. Don't post those ones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everybody else was those annoying, always good looking classmates. <laughs> or no, no, no. There's some embarrassing pictures. They they just don't care as much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The internet doesn't forget. No. No, it's brutal. <laughs> I was always thankful that I went through my high school years with no Facebook. Oh, yeah. I'm. Oh, man. Could you imagine being a kid today? Oh, my God. That that it must be the most stressful thing ever uh, to constantly... Every, everything, everything is out there. Yeah, everything. Yeah. Take me back to you when you're growing up. As a child, what was the soundtrack of your youth? What did uh, what music played in your house when you were not in control of the music? Mm. So uh, when I was very young, um, the mo most of uh, the music that we listened to was uh, like Black Sabbath and um, Deep Purple, Boston, uh, Chicago, um, T Rex, all that. Those are my dad's records. But I also remember my mom having this um soft cell record uh that we listened to a lot and and an ace of bass record that we loved me and my sister <laughs> so it was kind of a mix but uh i remember we had our record player and every time we put on a record it, it felt so special because we found the little brush and we had to like uh like remove the dust very gently like we 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 knew even though we were very young that this was something very precious that we needed to take care of um so i think somehow music from a very young age became something like yeah precious or something that you need to take care of and something important and later yeah oh i remember my first favorite song was smoke on the water <laughs> I mean, can you the riff? Yeah, can you imagine hearing that riff for the first time in your life? I was like, this is the best song ever. And my dad got me the um, their album uh, Live in Japan, and uh, I, I spun that constantly <laughs> when I was young. Um, and then 
Spice Girls happened in like 96 or something. And I was, I think, 10 years old or something. So I was, you know, completely the target group, the perfect target group for that band. You know, me and my girlfriend from school. Did they spice up your life? They did. Indeed. (laughs) My life was very spiced up at the moment. Who who was your favorite Spice Girl? Uh, I think it was, uh, I think it was Scary Spice. Yeah, I think she had like some, she had some attitude and she seemed like a really strong woman who could like kick ass and stuff like that. But, you know, we were dressing up as them, uh, me and my girlfriends, and I was always Emma because I had blonde hair and Mm -hmm. yeah, and we just had fun. You know, it was a game and they had all these things that you could collect, like photos and stuff. Um, Yeah, so it was somehow it was more about it connecting us like my me and my friends than it was about the music itself so it's more like a friendship thing i think and then in was it 1999 red hot chili peppers released californication and we had a radio in my um in my classroom and we would just listen to the radio and i remember the singles being played on the radio and I was like it was like listening to music for the first time I just I love those songs and I had to go out and get that album and I think it was the first album that I owned that where I didn't want to skip one song I just loved all the songs they were just the vibe was so awesome and it was playful it was fun it was it was deep it was like emotional and I don't know. It was just a perfect album, and and it still means a lot to me to this day. Um, and then I became older. What did I listen to then? I think then I got introduced to Marilyn Manson. Uh, I saw the video to um, Disposable Teens, and re- I remember thinking, you know, coming from the whole Spice Girls vibe, <laughs> that okay, this is. I should probably not like this because it's scary, it's dark, it's weird. Um, but there was something that just that that drew me into that. Like I was very curious about it. Like this this whole universe that he created um, and his music. Uh, and then I got into high school, and some of the guys from my class they had German, I had French. Uh, and they were um, uh, they were analyzing Amstein's songs, mm. and uh, so they played it. Cool teacher. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, cool teacher. Um, and they played it at a party that we were at. We we were at uh, the Muta album, and at the party, I wasn't really paying attention to the music. Um, but afterwards, like the two following days, um, the the riff to uh, the song Muta. It was just it was just stuck in my brain, um, and then I asked on Monday, like one of the guys, like what was that album that we were playing at the party? It was like, oh, it's this band called Rammstein. Like, do you want to borrow my CD? Because that's what you did back then, kids. <laughs> you borrowed each other's CDs, and I did. And I remember sitting in my sister's bedroom because she had a better uh, stereo than I did, and I put it on and I heard the album, and I just fell in love. It was, uh, yeah, it was amazing. And I knew that I had to get out and buy this album for myself because I had to return it to my friend and couldn't hear it anymore. I I needed it in my life. Absolutely. And from then on, I became the biggest Rammstein fan, like just trolling the Internet for uh, like fan forums and just, yeah, buying a, a posters and like all their CDs like well they had three at that time um yeah and I had the uh the family values DVD uh which I've seen so many times and I had the uh, DVD with all their um with all their uh, uh music videos and I just watched it again and again just found every interview I could online you know the internet wasn't that big around what was it 2002 <laughs> um so yeah just yeah i became a complete i'm nerd 
I saw that Family Values tour. It came through Montreal. It was probably one of the first shows that I ever went to go see, but Ramstein didn't play Montreal for some reason. I think they did an off day. Oh, no. It was just Incubus. It was Orgy, Incubus, and Corn. I think that was it. Not Ice Cube? No, not even. No. No, oh, there was wow. no rapper. No. Oh. And I remember being afraid, <laughs> <laughs> very afraid, <laughs> but I liked it. I awesome. liked it very much. Uh, yeah, I'm I so it. jealous. I'm so jealous you got to see the Family Values tour. I wish I would have seen the real one, like the, the, the thing that went through the States. But yeah. The, yeah. The, we need more tours like that. Well, we need tours, A, <laughs> because we have nothing right now. <laughs> yeah. But we need more cool tours like that where we're all the strong underground bands team up together and yeah. make something like an event that's cool. Yeah, absolutely. Was Limp Biscuit playing when you saw them? I did not see Limp Bizkit. No, they didn't play that show. I did see Limp Bizkit a few times after that. <laughs> I got down with the nookie. Awesome. And, uh, <laughs> I'm also jealous of that. I've never seen Limp Bizkit and um, I, I have to. <laughs> I saw point. them last year. Wow, where? Heavy Montreal. They, they replaced Avenged Sevenfold at the Heavy Montreal Festival last year here in Montreal. And they put on a crazy good show but they waste a lot of time on stage there oh there's a there's a lot more show than than content okay but fred durst is a good front man and he knows how to put on a good show so oh, awesome. I'll, 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 I'll give him that yeah when, when did you get the bug you mentioned that you wanted to be on stage uh performing theater how did you end up performing death metal vocals instead yeah wow so Actually, after a few years after high school, I actually I got into um, to a to an acting school here in Copenhagen. I really? uh, went to acting school for two years and realized that it probably wasn't for me anyway. Um, and then I didn't really know what to do. And then I was like, okay, I need something steady in my life. So I started studying, took a bachelor's degree in um, communications and English. And, um, so I had been going to, uh, to metal concerts for many years at that time. And I remember, you know, when you first hear death metal vocals, like on a CD or a record, you're like, yeah, that sounds cool. But in my mind, I was like, yeah, it's, it sounds cool, but it's obviously auto-tuned or something. Like, it's fake, yeah. Yeah, it's fake. Like a producer has done something to it to make it sound very evil. And then I remember going to my first death metal concert and just being completely blown away by the singers. What band was it? I think maybe it was Ill Disposed. Um, they're a Danish band, so they play here, you know, fairly often. Um, and I was like, oh my God, he can actually do that live? I was completely blown away and... And so for many years, I was, I've just been thinking about how do they do that? How on earth can you make those sounds just from your body? Uh, it doesn't make sense. And I was just so fascinated by that. And uh, I found out when I was about <clears throat> like in my mid 20s or something, one of my friends who sang in a Danish um, death model band at that time uh, that he was giving lessons. Um, so I was thinking about it, like, okay, maybe I should try it just to like, to satisfy my curiosity, um, to like try it with my own body and see like what is actually going on. Um, but I was very scared of it because it seemed like such an extreme thing to do. And, you know, being a woman didn't really seem like a feminine thing to do. So there was kind of, kind of, um like a, a limit that I had to cross. And then we were at a concert together, me and my friend, and I ended up getting very drunk. And then I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask him. <laughs> and I went over and I, and I asked him like, can you, can you teach me? And he just said, yeah, can you show up on Thursday? I was like, yeah, I'll see you Thursday. And I was like, oh my God, what did I just do? Um, but I showed up on Thursday and he was great. He just told me that I could just take all the time that I needed to like prepare and uh, just do my thing. And 
it just became a really great like place to work and so we just tried it and i was like okay this is this is fun like this is actually great like the feeling you get when you like nail it it's it feels really great and he said like if i wanted to i could tell him to like turn his back to me if he didn't want if i didn't want him to look at me and that happened a few times and it made it easier for me to sort of relax and like open up and and like focus on doing it and not focus on how i look because i'm very very ugly when i sing and sometimes when there's a guy in the room that sort of changes the energy and i don't know there's uh, you know being a girl you just told that you know you should look pretty for the guys or whatever not that i care about that but somehow it's still there in the back of my mind uh so being able to just ask him can you turn around because he can hear perfectly fine like what i'm doing and that that wasn't a problem that really helped that i was just able to like do my own thing and open up and yeah so he gave me a really great and safe and fun working environment to just try and do it and i didn't really have a plan uh with it i just wanted to try it to satisfy my curiosity and then i think six months later convent became a thing and i got asked if i wanted to join and here you are i tried that 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 yeah and that was really scary as well because you know standing up on a stage and singing in front of other people that's still scary to me um but yeah i did it and here we are <laughs> okay you've stemmed many questions <laughs> as everything you've just said hold on one thing at a time have you taken your you from your theater classes you get taught how to project your voice to breathe properly so that you can speak to an entire room of people have you taken some of that diaphragm learned breathing and applied it in those lessons mm. was it was it an easy transition well i've actually also taken some singing lessons before which was just like uh what's it called like clean singing you know jazz um that lesser singing pardon yeah 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 <laughs> 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 that you know mor mortal singing <laughs> uh yeah so i i think i had that incorporated in my body pretty well but i think i use the techniques that i learned in my metal vocal uh lessons more and uh on the side i actually took some uh, some speaking lessons um from a vocal coach who happened to be a former punk singer so she knew everything about like using your vocals in like an, an extreme way as well. So that was also a perfect match. Um, and she gave me some warm ups that I also use today and uh, that I wouldn't do without uh, really. So, so yeah, cause I thought, you know, I'm doing all these extreme things with my voice. It would be a stupid thing to damage it while just speaking. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if you're in a bar with, you know, loud music and it's the worst thing. The worst thing. After a show, leaning over that merch table saying, what size? Yeah. <laughs> when I've had a few a few beers, maybe a few craft beers, that, that's that's always my downfall. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. The uh, second thing that a question that arose as you were speaking before was, do you still feel that you look ugly while you scream? Yeah, absolutely. Really? Yeah. But absolutely. It's, it's, that, it's such a powerful thing. Yeah. I mean, it's it's great i love it and you know i don't i don't step up on stage to look good or to be attractive to the guys in the audience or whatever i step up on stage to tell stories mm -hmm. and you can be ugly and tell stories um, but I, I, I <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get this out of your hand <laughs> It's, 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 I think any guy that's in that room that sees you perform the way you perform is going to be into you <laughs> because of that. Not, he's going to think that's going to be what he wants. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that, you know, like Angela from, from Arch Enemy, you know, never looked unattractive when she was screaming. No, that's true. And I've seen pictures of you and you don't look any. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
uh, some pictures I try to not <laughs> upload <laughs> to my because uh, <laughs> the internet never forgets. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I think you can find some pictures of me just looking like I have no neck and. Uh, well, that's that. to get the, the, the airflow. The, the, the that's right. <laughs> that's right. Uh, how do you, uh, the third question that arose from uh, what you were saying before was, how do you manage being comfortable on stage now? You, you still feel nervous. What steps do you take to physically get yourself onto stage to fight that? Mm, I think that we've all reached a point now where we know that it's just a matter of getting the first, I don't know, 30 seconds over with, and then you're into it. And then you, uh, you remember how awesome it feels to perform live. Basically, I just try to, re to relax. Uh, cause that's, I think that that's my strongest technique mm -hmm. actually to, um, I have to be in a state where my body has to feel like it's almost falling asleep. Um, because then I feel like I can open up more, like open my throat up and my mouth up and just, yeah, have a lot of, uh, what's it called? Resonance? Mm -hmm. And focus and control on your breathing, which lets yeah. your technique work better. Yeah. Because if you're stressed, everything gets tense, right? Yeah. And you can't breathe like, like exactly. yeah. Yeah. Every time I play a big festival, that's how I feel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's so easy to um, to like go up in your head and go, what if? Like, what if I forget the lyrics? But then I can remind myself, it doesn't matter. If I forget the lyrics, I just yell something. People can hear it anyway. It's the beauty of our true vocals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. An annoying question, but I have to ask you, is uh, I'm personally fed up of all of this garbage about being a, a female in metal you guys are comprised of many females in metal. I'm tired of seeing it being like a, a selling point. I wanted you, everyone to just be on an equal plane. How do you feel about that? Uh, absolutely. These like female package tours. I want it to all go. I, I, it shouldn't be a selling point anymore. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we've been, uh, we've been asked to do like girls' nights, uh, at venues and, you know, yeah, trying to, I don't know, book tours with other uh, female bands just because they're female. And yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's tiresome. Uh, I've, seen, like, I've seen it happen to my friends in the agonist all the time. They get, they get thrown into these tour packages that, and me looking at it from the outside, doesn't make sense just because there's a female in the band and she sings clean sometimes and screams. I, I don't get it. I, I don't understand why the industry is still trying to play these cards. Yeah, yeah. It's weird. Also, when like we just did our tour and I can't re remember which uh, venue uh, wrote this, but but in the um, in the Facebook event, it said like female fronted or f all female doom band something something. And it's just annoying <laughs> because like, are you here to look at females or are you here to listen to music? Um, and, you know, I think it's a shame that um, some promoters for some reason still think that the metal audience is only straight males. Mm -hmm. um, like I, I know so many women who listen to metal and I see so many women uh, out when we're playing concerts. And when I'm out as a guest to other concerts, um, yeah. Uh, so why why is it why are we still telling ourselves the story that it's only um, straight males who like metal music or that metal music is only for straight males? Yeah, it's a bit weird. Let's change that. It's over. Yes. Yeah, it's over. Keep, keep leading <laughs> the way. Girls, yeah. you're invited to the shows. You will not get groped. We will take care of you. <laughs> Absolutely. I will not grope you. I swear. <laughs> Unless you ask. No. <laughs> One last question. Uh, what is your hangover cure? Oh, my God. Um, I try to drink water as I'm drinking alcohol. I feel like that helps. Um, yeah. 
basically just water. I tend to always have, like, be an adult and buy chips in advance uh, so that I don't have to go to the store for chips. But then when I eat them, I just feel sick. <laughs> but you I'm, still do it every time. But I still do it. Like, why do I still do it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you so, so much for sitting down with me, drinking a craft beer. Uh, it's been a long time coming. I was hoping to come back to Denmark so we could hang out. Yeah, absolutely. But instead, we're doing it now, and we'll do it again then. Cheers. Cheers. Everyone it listen to Convent. Do it. <laughs> it's an <Cheer>. honor. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, thank you all so, so much for listening right to the end. You know that I love and appreciate that. Enrique is such an excellent, excellent, extreme vocalist. I absolutely loved my chat with her. I love how humble she is, and uh, I, I totally, totally love what Convent is all about. So if you do not know who Convent is and you're just discovering them right now, I highly suggest that you go check them out. I have put the, the link to all of their pertinent social medias and where you can find their music in the description of this podcast. And you should go check it out because it's a, they just released a, a freaking amazing record. I hope that you have a good rest of the week. I have one more episode coming at you this Friday. Don't forget tomorrow, Vox and Hops Thirsty Thursday Virtual Hang. I want to see lots of your happy faces there. I've been loving these. But until then... Remember to enjoy life, metal, and craft beer. Cheers, Vox and Hopsheads. Oh,